So today we're going to complete the landing challenge for Quito Airport, which is a very challenging airport at high altitude, so almost 8,000 feet, which means that both the aerodynamic um, envelope of the airplane as well as the power management is going to have an impact on the thinner air that you find at that altitude. Before we fly, I really want to talk a little bit about the power management of the aircraft. Now, I have a complex rating for piston engine aircraft, but I have zero time in King Airs and uh, I have no experience flying turboprop aircraft. But luckily enough, uh, we're right at an airport, so I walked over there and talked to a couple of King Air pilots and they explained to me how um, the throttle quadrant and the levers work in a King Air aircraft. So in a piston air engine aircraft, you have your black levers, your throttle levers, which really controls your manifold pressure. You have your prop levers, which controls your RPM, and you have your mixture, which controls your fuel flow. On a turboprop aircraft, like in a King Air, they work quite differently. And I have to say I'm not an expert in this, so I hope I explained this right. But what is usually your mixture levers is what's called your condition levers. And it either sets the engine in a high RPM idle or a low RPM idle. And I actually just reversed that movement. The prop levers control the angle of attack, which they also do in a piston engine aircraft. But the difference is, is that it's not linked directly to the RPM of the aircraft like it is in a piston engine. And then last but not least, the two black levers controls the throttle of the aircraft. So quite a bit differently, but we're gonna set this up for the approach on runway 18 and um, see how this goes. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is set this plane up for landing configuration. So we already set our condition levers for low RPM and the angle of attack for the propellers. And so the first thing I'm gonna do is throttle back to make sure that we don't get outside uh, the envelope of where we're allowed to apply flaps. I'm gonna get down, drag, create additional drag, and then a flap lever down. So one really cool feature that Microsoft has implemented is uh, as default program to our yoke, um, there is a button you can press, which is the push and talk button, which uh, sets up your, your captain view to be looking the deadline uh, straight down the runway, so that you kind of have um, full situational awareness coming into the airport. So we just turn base to final. Check our airspeed, just a little bit high, so throttle back a little bit. Gears down, flaps full. Now one thing I'm having trouble seeing is the uh, poppy or vassy uh, glide slope indicators on the runway. Um, and even when you come closer, I've noticed that you don't really see the red or the white lights on there. So you kind of got to have played by ear uh, if you're on glide slope. Now we're hitting 105 right now. When you're coming in on an approach, it's really important that you control your airspeed with your pitch. So if you're too slow, pitch down. If you're too fast, pull up. And then control your altitude with your throttle. It might seem counterintuitive at first, but it makes it way more easy to be right on, the, on, on glide slope and your correct approach speed when you come in. Now, uh, for this landing challenge, don't sink. Don't sink. I will don't kind of sink. set it up like don't a sink. short field approach don't to sink. kind of get it just don't setting sink. up for the for landing on, on the markers. All right, so we're coming in, we're aiming for the numbers. All right, I'm gonna throttle back already. And then be careful that you don't hit that, that ground effect. Oh, see we did a little bit here. Beta. Increase angle of attack. Full break.
And I think that was a pretty decent landing. Thank you for watching.